the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Krishna Srinivasan, the director of the IMS Asia and Pacific Department, announces that a team from the International Monetary Fund is scheduled to visit Sri Lanka shortly. Sri Lanka has reached a milestone of over 1.6 million tourist arrivals this year, with more than 117,000 visitors in October. On the last trading day of the week, there's an upward movement observed in the market, building on positive momentum from earlier in the week. The S&P SL20 closed slightly higher and the ASPI also reflected net gains. And all three US indexes closed lower after Microsoft and Meta platforms highlighted growing artificial intelligence costs that could hit their earnings. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Krishna Srinivasan, the director of the IMF's Asia and Pacific Department, announced that a team from the International Monetary Fund is scheduled to visit Sri Lanka shortly. The purpose of this visit is to discuss the third review under the country's extended fund facility program. During a press briefing held by the IMF today, Krishna Srinivasan, the director of the IMF's Asia and Pacific Department, addressed inquiries about the ongoing situation in Sri Lanka. He revealed that a team from the International Monetary Fund will soon visit the country to discuss the third review under its extended fund facility program. Srinivasan noted that shortly after the new government took office, the IMF mission visited Sri Lanka, where productive discussions were held with the president and his team. He emphasized that Sri Lanka has made significant progress under the program, which must be safeguarded. To build on these successes, he stressed the importance of implementing necessary measures. He mentioned that a Sri Lankan delegation is currently in Washington to continue discussions on the next review, indicating that negotiations are ongoing and that good progress has been made. The mission aims to return to Sri Lanka to further these discussions for the upcoming third review. Sri Lanka has reached a milestone of over 1.6 million tourist arrivals this year, with more than 117,000 visitors in October. This increase underscores the country's growing appeal as a travel destination. Despite the positive momentum in Sri Lanka's tourism sector, industry stakeholders believe that arrivals could have been higher if not for recent challenges, such as delays in visa processing and travel advisories from foreign missions warning of potential security threats in Arugambe. The Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority had initially set a target of 2.3 million arrivals for 2024, based on the benchmark established in 2018, along with the projected revenue of $4.5 billion. India remains the largest source market, contributing 32,097 tourists, or 27.4% of October's arrivals, followed by the UK with 9,113 visitors and China with 7,609 tourists. Despite these challenges, Sri Lanka's tourism industry is performing better than it has in the past five years, generating $2.34 billion in revenue during the first nine months of 2024, a remarkable 61.2% increase compared to the same period last year. Looking ahead, the new administration of the SLTDA has set an ambitious five-year target to attract 5 million tourists and generate $8.5 billion in revenue, aiming for consistent annual growth. Sri Lanka's trade deficit widened in September this year as import expenditures surged due to strong demand for consumer and investment goods, outpacing modest gains in export earnings, according to central bank data. For the January-September period, Sri Lanka's cumulative trade deficit reached $4.2 billion, up from $3.34 billion the previous year, reflecting rising imports amid a gradual recovery in domestic demand. Merchandise exports increased by 4.1% year-on-year to $1.01 billion in September, driven by industrial exports, particularly textiles and garments. However, industrial exports declined compared to August, especially in high-value segments like gems and machinery. Imports surged 22 percent year-on-year to $1.65 billion with significant increases across all major categories. Intermediate goods imports rose notably in textiles and chemicals. Despite a rise in crude oil imports, fuel costs fell due to reduced prices. Investment goods imports also increased, fueled by spending on machinery and equipment, while consumer goods imports expanded across food and beverages. 
Sri Lanka, alongside Pakistan, is poised to lead South Asian frontier markets, extending the current market rally into next year. This momentum is supported by ongoing economic and political reforms, low valuations, a projected recovery in earnings and the potential for greater political stability, according to AFC Asia Frontier Fund. Sri Lanka has emerged as the second best performing market index in the fund, with returns of 29.7%. The country, along with Pakistan, Pakistan and Vietnam is expected to drive earnings recovery in the coming period. The anticipated strong earnings recovery is likely to support the ongoing re-rating of Asian frontier markets, with the fund emphasizing that enhanced political stability could further propel the Colombo Stock Exchange's current market rally into 2025. The Export Development Board has organized an awareness workshop for manufacturers of Ayurveda, herbal and cosmetic products in an effort to encourage local exports to the wider global market. According to the Export Development Board, a workshop is being held to equip participants with essential insights into the regulatory and technical requirements necessary for positioning their products in international markets. Key topics to be covered include the NMR, narcotic and psychotropic substance regulations for cosmetic production, registration, Sri Lankan standards for cosmetic and ingredients and the registration process for herbal and ayurvedic products. Participants will also gain a theoretical understanding of the technology used in the preparation of herbal cosmetic products. Additionally, the workshop will highlight the role of Sri Lanka Cosmetic Manufacturers Association, emphasizing its efforts to advance the cosmetic industry and support local manufacturers in meeting international standards. Interested applicants are encouraged to apply for the program through the EDB website with selections based on a first-come, first-served basis. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the last trading day of the week, we observed movement in the market, building on positive momentum from earlier in the week. The S&P SL20 closed slightly higher and the ASPI also reflected a net gain. There's optimism that this positive trend will persist throughout the upcoming week. To provide further insights, we connect with Netmi Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The market commenced the week on a positive note, recording at 12,610, registering a near three-year high. Most of the sectors experienced price gains amid active investor participation. Uh, towards midweek, the market sustained the positive momentum on the back of increased investor participation as high net worth and retail engagement was considerably high. Towards the latter part of the day, the market concluded in the green territory as the ASPI was recorded at 12,864, gaining 93 points during the day as banking sector stocks significantly contributed towards the gain. The market was able to sustain the positive momentum during the week as ASPI gained 2%. Uh, besides that, the turnover was recorded at LKR 4.9 billion during the day, 81% higher than the monthly average of LKR 2.7 billion. The turnover gained 11.4% during the week, mostly dominated by the banking sector, diversified financials and food, beverage and tobacco sectors along with the capital goods sector. The Colombo Stock Exchange experienced an upward trend this week, signaling growing investor confidence in the market's outlook. To provide us with a detailed market summary, let's connect with Ranjan Ranathunga from First Capital Holdings. During today's trading session, investors displayed a mixed sentiment following several bullish tra lead, uh, trading sessions, leading to a slight dip in the market during the morning hours of trading. However, Towards the midday, there was a recovery on the index with banking sector companies, mainly the large cap as well as the uh, small and mid cap banks uh, boosting the index to close the day at 93 points with a gain. Therefore, the index was recorded at 12,864 uh, with in increased interest on banking sector shares as well as diverse sector companies. Meanwhile, uh, in uh, Melster Corp, Hatton National Bank, Richard Pires, LOSC and uh, CFIN were the largest contribu positive contributors for today's index gain. 
Meanwhile, amidst multiple crossings, turnovers stood at LKR 5 billion for the day, making an 81% increase from the monthly average of 2.7 billion. Out of the five to, uh, offboard transactions recorded for the day, a notable transaction was recorded on uh, CDB Bank uh, with a stake totaling to 12.7% traded offboard at uh, 247.5 rupees per share. Moreover, Diocese Sector Financials also uh, saw added interest during the day uh, with turnover contributing to 52% of the uh, day's turnover followed by banking sector and capital sector goods jointly contributing 31% to the turnover. Gold prices rose today, heading for a slight weekly gain as investors prepared for upcoming U.S. payrolls data, which may provide insights into the Federal Reserve's interest rate outlook. Spot gold increased 0.4% to $2,753.75 per ounce, up 0.2% for the week, following a recent record high of $2,790.15. Meanwhile, U.S. gold futures climbed to 0.5% to $2,763 and 60 cents. These fluctuations reflect market sentiment as traders monitor economic indicators that could influence monetary policy. The anticipation surrounding the payrolls data is particularly heightened as it could affect expectations for future interest rate adjustments. As uncertainty persists in the broader economy, gold continues to attract investors seeking a safe haven. Oil prices extended their gains today, rising more than $1 a barrel as they sought to recover from earlier weekly losses. This uptake follows reports that Iran is preparing a retaliatory strike on Israel from Iraq in the coming days. Brent crude futures increased by $1.39 or 1.9%, reaching $74.20 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude rose by $1.44 or 2.1% to $70.70. Israeli intelligence has indicated that Iran may be planning an attack on Israel, deploying a significant number of drones and ballistic missiles from Iraqi territory. This potential escalation in tensions could occur before the upcoming U.S. presidential election, adding to market volatility. The Sri Lankan rupee has seen a slight appreciation against the U.S. dollar today compared to Wednesday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate for the U.S. dollar has decreased, while the selling rate has also been adjusted. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back. The Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology has been ranked as the top non-state university in Sri Lanka and joined third overall in the Times Higher Education World University Rankings 2025. The Times Higher Education World University Rankings, now in its 25th year, is a trusted benchmark in global higher education. And SLIIT's impressive third place among Sri Lankan universities reflects its commitment to academic excellence. The rankings utilize key performance performance indicators across teaching, research, international outlook and industry linkages providing a comprehensive view of institutional performance. SLIIT's inclusion highlights its dedication to empowering future academics and fostering strong industry connections while attracting a number of postgraduate research students. Looking ahead, SLIIT aims to enhance its academic and research capabilities, solidify its status and contribute even more to society in the coming years. This recognition positions SLIIT as a leading choice for students seeking quality higher education in Sri Lanka. 
Tilan Vijay Singh, an experienced investment banker and founder of TWC Group, has joined Mahindra Ideal Finance Limited (MIFL) as an independent non-executive director. This appointment complements the recent hiring of Mafadal Junia as managing director and CEO, marking a strategic push for MIFL in Sri Lanka's finance sector. With a strong background in investment banking, public policy, and corporate strategy, Tilan has previously led companies such as Asian Hotels Properties PLC and served as chairman of the Board of Investment and the National Agency for Public-Private Partnerships. His expertise will enhance MIFL's mission to deliver innovative financial solutions to Sri Lanka. David Pierce Renewable Energy Private Limited has completed a solar energy project at the DPMCL manufacturing complex in Ranna Hambantota, reinforcing its commitment to sustainable energy in Sri Lanka. The solar installation at the DPMCL facility features a capacity of 750 kWp and a 620 kW inverter covering 43,000 square feet. This project highlights DPRE's commitment to advancing renewable energy solutions in Sri Lanka. With over 40 years of trust and innovation from the David Pires Group, DPRE is a leader in the country's green energy movement, offering on-grid, off-grid and hybrid solar solutions for households and businesses. The primary goal of the RANNA project is to meet DPMCL's electricity needs while contributing surplus energy to the national grid with an expected annual output of 915 MWH. Sanat Sujiva DPRE Head of Operations said that they completed the installation using Jinko N-type panels with over 1,000 panels installed in three weeks. Oasis, an innovative platform from LOLC Technologies, has partnered with Sanfer Technologies Limited to enhance its go-to market strategy. The Memorandum of Understanding was signed at LOLC Holdings PLC's head office in Rajagiriya, allowing Oasis to expand its market presence locally and internationally. Oasis provides comprehensive business orchestration, automation technology, featuring process orchestration, DIY APIS, e-signature, asset lifecycle management, AI AI-driven automation and document intelligence. This no-code platform streamlines workflows and promotes interdepartmental collaboration across various industries. Horana Plantations PLC has become the first company in Sri Lanka to develop a management system compliant with the European Union deforestation regulation, setting a new benchmark for the sustainability in the industry. Horana Plantations PLC has achieved a groundbreaking milestone with third-party verification from the global non-profit organization Preferred by Nature, which aims to drive sustainable impact for people, nature and climate. This recognition underscores HPL's commitment to rigorous certification standards including sustainable agricultural practices, system requirements, chain of custody standards and EUDR indicators. HPL's management system is designed to minimize environmental impact and ensure transparency throughout the supply chain. Compliance with the European Union deforestation regulation allows companies to Compliance with the European Union deforestation regulation allows companies to access the EU market, which is governed by strict environmental standards aimed at preventing deforestation and promoting sustainability. This achievement positions Sri Lankan companies favorably with European buyers compared to foreign markets that may not meet these regulations, enhancing national competitiveness and consumer trust. <laughs> Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian markets began what could be a pivotal month cautiously, with most shares lower and treasury yields nearing three-month highs. Investors are closely watching for U.S. jobs data, while a rate cut next week appears largely anticipated. The focus is on Friday's non-form payrolls report, coming just ahead of Tuesday's U.S. presidential election and the Federal Reserve policy meeting the following day. In Japan, the Nikkei dropped 2.6% as a stronger yen raised concerns for exporters. The dollar rose 0.3% to 152.46 yen, partially reversing its nearly 1% decline overnight as less dovish comments 
from Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda hinted at a potential year-end rate hike which supported the yen. All three U.S. stock indexes closed lower after Microsoft and Meta platforms highlighted growing artificial intelligence costs that could hit their earnings, curbing enthusiasm for mega caps that have fueled the market rally this year. U.S. stocks fell across the board Thursday after Microsoft and Meta platforms highlighted growing artificial intelligence costs that could hit their earnings. The Dow dropped nearly 1 percent, the S&P 500 lost nearly 2 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq slid nearly 3 percent. All of the magnificent seven mega-cap technology stocks finished in the red, with Microsoft the biggest loser down 6 percent, while Meta was off 4 percent. After the market closed, MAG7 member Apple beat Wall Street sales and profit expectations for its fiscal fourth quarter, bolstered by strong early sales of the iPhone 16. Another member of the club, Amazon, also posted quarterly revenue and earnings the top forecasts, setting up a potential bounce back in shares Friday. On the economic front, a key inflation measure came in roughly in line with expectations, while consumer spending increased a little more than expected. After the data, traders stuck to bets for a 25 basis point interest rate reduction at the Federal Reserve's meeting next week. Payments processor MasterCard reported a better-than-expected profit for the third quarter yesterday as customers encouraged by economic stability ramped up their spending. MasterCard reported a better-than-expected profit for the third quarter on Thursday as consumers encouraged by economic stability boosted their spending. Shares of the payments processor opened nearly 3% higher to hit an all-time high following the results. But shares then fell nearly 3% in morning trading after the company disclosed that the European Commission had sought documents tied to a broader investigation into alleged anti-competitive behavior in the European Union. MasterCard said it was cooperating with the request. On the earnings conference call, company executives said the business continues to benefit from healthy U.S. consumer confidence and moderating inflation, while confidence in Europe continues to improve. Cross-border volume, a gauge of travel demand that tracks spending on cards outside the country of their issue, climbed 18 percent compared with last year. Meanwhile, the value of transactions processed on MasterCard's network also grew by double digits. An analyst told Reuters the company deserves a higher valuation based on its growth prospects. MasterCard's results come the same day the U.S. Commerce Department said consumer spending rose more than expected in September and was higher than originally reported in August. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend.